Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. E. And today, we're going to be learning about V equals big B times little h. So we've been learning a lot about volume lately, and the formula that we've been using has been V equal length times width times height. But something we're going to learn is, if we whip out the old star chart, is that that's not the only formula we can use for volume. So we see that formula that we're mostly used to, volume equals length times width times height, but it says, or V equals big B times little h. So this is another formula that we can use to help us find volume. Now I know you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, Mr. B, you told me that A equals B times h. Yeah, this is some garbage. How can area and volume have the exact same formula, B times h? That makes no sense. So basically, Mr. E, what you're saying is volume and area are the same thing. All right, I'm going back to bed. Oh, go back to bed, sleepy Mr. E. I'm gonna explain exactly why volume does not equal area. So he claimed that that volume equals area. That simply isn't true. And the reason why is because the Bs are a little different in each of the formulas. You may or may not have noticed there's one B that is capitalized in the volume formula, and in the area formula, it's a lowercase b. Let me introduce to you something a little bit evil in math. Sometimes if a letter is capitalized or lowercase, it can completely change the meaning of that letter. I'm sorry about that. That's just how math can be sometimes. So in the volume formula, big B stands for the base of a 3D figure, where the lowercase b in the area formula stands for the base of a 2D figure. I know that's kind of confusing, but stick with me here, okay? So let's talk a little bit more about the base of 3D figures. So the base of the 3D figure is just the bottom, okay? We're finding the area of the bottom, okay? Just the, the bottom of that shape. We've been typically working with rectangular prisms and cubes, so we're going to be using squares and rectangles to help us with that. But in the future, you can use other shapes to find what is the bottom of your shape. So finding the area of the bottom of a 3D figure is pretty easy. We're just going to find the length times the width. So essentially, big B just equals length times width. I'd write that down because that's not on your star chart. So if you can just remember that big B is just replacing length times width, it'll make it a lot easier. So let's look at a visual example. We have this empty box here, and we know when we're trying to find volume, we're just trying to find how many cubes fit in to said box. In the second example, it shows that this is one layer, and we can count how many cubes are on the bottom layer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now that we know what the bottom layer or the base is, we can use the formula V equals big B times H. So let's fill in what we know and what we don't know. Don't know the volume yet. Big B is going to be 8 and H is going to be 3. As we can see in the third picture, it stacks 3 high. So now we can replace what we know and what we don't know to get us an answer of volume equals 24 units cubed. So we could put 24 cubes in that box. So Volume's easy. V equals big B times little h. One thing we are going to have to know, though, is there's going to be some appropriate times for us to use V equals big B times little h, but there's also going to be some times where we need to use V equals length times width times height. Let's go ahead and practice a couple problems together. All right, so we've got our first problem here, and what we're going to try to decide to do is what formula are we going to use, length times width times height or big B times little h? It says flowers were delivered in the box shown below which of the following would represent the volume of the flower box? So in this one, I see three different numbers that are being used. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use V equals length times width times height, okay? So I can say V equals question mark because we don't know what it is yet. We'll say the length is nine, the width is 12 and the height is six. Now that doesn't really matter which one we choose for those, because remember multiplication is commutative, so we can switch those numbers around as needed, and it makes sense because we can flip the rectangular box as needed too, okay? So we're going to write question mark equals nine times 12 times six. So something we could have done is we could have rearranged the numbers to make the multiplication a little bit more friendly um, but we can get through this, okay? So nine times 12, if I don't know that off the top of my head, I can easily come over here to the side and I can multiply those together. That's going to give me 18. 
and that's going to give me 10. So we get 108. So 108. And then we bring down the rest of our equation because we're high quality students. And then we do 108 times 6. Okay, so I'm just going to come back down over here. We're going to multiply that. 8 times 6 will give us 48. And then 6 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. And then we get a 6. So when we multiply those two together, we get 648 equals question mark. And then the last thing we need to do is make sure that we label our units. So it's going to be 648 uh, inches cubed. Okay. And it looks like we got a good answer. So this one, it was more appropriate for us to use V equals length times width times height. Though we technically are going through the steps, we did that, and then we're using big B times H. So it kind of worked for both of them. So it's up to you to decide which one you want to use, okay? Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next problem. So in our next problem, it says, Rachel lined the bottom of a box with cubes each cube had a volume of one square centimeter. The base layer of the volume of the box is shown below. Rachel will need six layers to fill the box. What is the volume of the box in cubic centimeters? So this one, it kind of looks like to me right off the bat because it's telling me about the base over here, okay? That we're gonna want to use V equals big B times little h, okay? So we gotta find out a couple things. I know that we're looking for the volume, so we don't know that, okay? The base is written right here, okay? So we can see what the base is going to be. We'll count that up in a second. And then the height is going to be how many layers we have. So that's how many times we're gonna stack this on top of each other. So the layers is going to be six, okay? And it looks like we're using centimeters, so I'm gonna label it, okay? So now all we gotta do is we just gotta go through and count the cubes, okay? So we're counting the cubes, kind of like in that Minecraft video you guys watched. So one, two, three, four, five by three. So three times five would get us 15. So our base is 15 centimeters squared, okay? Now all we have to do is insert what we know and what we don't know and solve. So question mark equals 15 times six, okay? I'm gonna come do that over by the side because I don't know my 15s by heart. I know some of my smart students probably do. So we're going to carry the three and then that will give us a nine and then we're done. So the nice thing about using uh, V equals big B times little h is it takes a little bit less math, one less step. Um, but like I said, it's gonna be important to know whether you should be using that or not. So volume is gonna equal 90 centimeters cubed. And again, really, really important that we are labeling our units, okay? So this example showed that V equals big B times little h was more appropriate. Let's go ahead and do one more problem. All right, our final problem says the area of the bottom of a cube is shown below. What is the cube's volume? So one thing I'm noticing right away is the word cube, okay? And what do I know about a cube? A cube has all the same dimensions. So the length, the width, the height, everything is going to be the same. So what I'm noticing over here is this is five centimeters, this is five centimeters, okay? So I can find the area of this pretty easily, okay? So the area of this square is going to be five times five, which would give us 25, okay? So since I know the area now of this, I can find the volume, because if I know the, the length and the width are five, that means the height's going to be five too. So we're gonna go V equals question mark. Big B is 25 centimeters uh, squared. Looks like I like centimeters today. Use that a lot. And the height we know is gonna be five because it is a cube. So if you see a problem where it's asking about a cube, remember that all the dimensions in the cube are the same because its primary shape that it's using is a square and a square has to have all congruent sides. So now we're just going to write in what we know and what we don't know. So that equals 25 times five. This one I'm not gonna to need to go over to the side and do, okay? I think of quarters when I do this. Four quarters equals a dollar plus another 25 would be 125, all right? So 
looks like V is going to equal 125 centimeters cubed. So as you continue to do problems like this, you're going to figure out whether or not you're going to use V equals length times width times height or V equals big B times little h. There's going to be certain scenarios where it's more appropriate to use one or the other. And there's going to be some word problems where it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you would like to use. I hope this video is helpful. I hope you get a little bit more practice with the formula V equals big B times little h so you can get a hundo on your next test. Keep learning, Ellsbros.